The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Last week, we got started on a device to prevent teens from texting while driving. Today, we're going to finish up the project. To do that, we'll need to get the electronics working and then put them into the case that we already built last week. Let's get started. But first, the news. So in bed news, I'd like to show you a 3D object that I recently made that I've actually been trying to make for years. Okay, so the problem is when you eat spam, if you like spam, I like spam. A lot of people do, <laughs> really. And, but if you're done with it, but you want to put it back in the fridge, you have to like wrap saran wrap around it. You know, it's kind of cumbersome. You can't really put the lid back on and then saran wrap doesn't really stick. So I thought, what's the solution? So I came up with the spam saver lid. It's a 3D printed object that I made with my replicator. And the idea is after you've eaten a few slices of spam, you just snap the lid on and then you can put it back in the fridge. Plus the lid can be used to slice the spam too. So if you'd like to take a look at this object, it's actually on thingiverse.com. Just search for spam and you'll be the first person on the internet to actually seek out spam. Here's the overview of our electronics. Here's five volts from the cigarette lighter adapter, goes into the microcontroller, and it goes through a current sensor to the USB charge plug. The current sensor detects how much current this is using and reports it to the microcontroller unit. The microcontroller unit logs the data to this SD card. Now the SD card runs off 3.3 volts while the microcontroller is five volts. So we have to go through a voltage converter so this doesn't fry that. However, the return signal from the SD card doesn't have to go through the voltage shifter because you can use low voltage with a high voltage device. This diagram illustrates the voltage difference. So we all know that a five volts or a high gives you a one, zero volts ground gives you a zero, but there's actually kind of a cutoff point. And usually it's around 2.5 volts for a five volt device. So if your device runs off five volts, but the input is only 3.3 volts, we see here that 3.3 volts is high enough to get past the threshold to trigger as a one as well. And that's why we don't need to convert 3.3 up to five, but we do want to convert the five down to 3.3. Again, some devices are five volt tolerant, which means you can put five volts into a 3.3 device, but you should make sure they are first. Or just a rule of thumb, don't do it. Time to wire up the parts. I've got a little PCB socket for the chip and my surface mount micro SD card connector. In the next episode, we're actually gonna have a tutorial on how to wire a surface mount, so stay tuned. I'm gonna put these things together and then I can test them out before I put them in the car. On the screen here, I have a pinout of a micro SD card and I wanna make sure I get the orientation correct when I wire up the slot manually, which is kind of crazy of me, but that's all right. The parts are all wired up. Let's take a closer look at them. We have the microcontroller here, 3.3 volt regulator here, SD card, level shifter, the current sense integrated circuit, capacitor for smoothing, and the crystal. I also added this transistor here because the microcontroller doesn't have enough power to run the piezo, but it can flip a switch, a transistor, and that can power the piezo. All right, so we're gonna hook it up to power here. When we actually do this, we'll use a cigarette lighter adapter. Okay, there's the power. Now let's run through the cycles as if you're using this. Here's the phone. We're gonna start with the phone already installed and we're gonna cycle it. Here comes the car. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Okay, it probably just logged that the phone was installed when the car started. Uh-oh, the phone is removed from the dock. Now it's counting how long the phone is removed from the dock. Oh, but don't worry, the phone was put back in. And then the teen safely stopped the car. Uh, we haven't hooked up the buzzer yet, but we will. We'll demonstrate that when it's actually in the car. So besides the alarm, the parents can pull out the SD card and see what the kid did. Let's take a look at the contents of that SD card. There's two log files on here, good and bad, but no ugly. Let's take a look at the good one. Good one shows the teen doing things right. So right here you see the car was started with a phone already in the dock. And in a perfect world, you'll just see this over and over again and we'll just append it every time to the file. 
So yes, we want to see that the phone was inserted with the car already started. The bad text file shows when they did something wrong. In this case, the phone was removed from the dock while the car was running, 10 seconds after the car started, but then it was put back in. And then if it's removed again, it'll tell you that. So those things always show up in the bad file. So <laughs> like anything in life, there's a lot more bad than good. But this way, you know, at least it's some sort of record of what happened. I actually omitted the real-time clock. It just seemed like it was a little too excessive for this. I wanted to take a moment to tell you about a groundbreaking new way to simulate your Eagle schematic with LT Spice 4. All of you electronic engineers out there, you'll want to listen to this. LT Spice 4 is Linear Technologies High Performance Spice Simulator, Schematic Capture, and Waveform Viewer, with enhancements and models for simulating switching regulators. LT Spice 4 provides all spice analysis types within the time and frequency domain. To make these functionalities available for your schematic created with Eagle, you can download the LT Spice 4 Eagle ULP user language program from the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash CADSoft. This ULP enables the export of Eagle data into LT Spice 4 and vice versa. Complete schematic sheets and single schematic groups can be transferred. Schematic changes are also synchronized between both tools. Download the amazing LT Spice 4 Eagle ULP now and get your free 30-day trial of Eagle at element14.com forward slash CADSoft. Delivering award-winning engineering software like Eagle is just another way that Element 14 makes it easy for engineers to be inspired and find the solutions they need to get the job done. And now, back to the show. So we've all seen examples of programming that's dry and boring. Tonight, Ben Heck Theater presents Our Code with Allison, the robot. I'm a microcontroller unit, henceforth known as the MCU. And here's our doc. Now normally the car is off, so the MCU is off as well. The car is off and so am I. I have no power. Right, so now let's start the car. Vroom, vroom, vroom. I have power. The car must be on. But oh no, the phone's not in the dock. I do not detect power being drawn. Therefore the phone is not plugged in. There'll be a short grace period to plug it in, but if not, an alarm sounds. And the infraction is logged to the SD card. Here's what the teen should do. Plug the phone into the dock, and then start the car. I have power. The car must be turned on. I detect current being drawn by the dock. The phone must be properly plugged in. Logging data to SD card. Complete. Resisting urge to blow siren. Complete. Also, if the teen removes the phone before the car is turned back off. Texting alert. So our code makes sure that if the car is on, the phone's in the dock. If not, it logs the incident and sounds an alarm. If it is in the dock, it logs the compliance. So it's good and bad. Now I'm gonna write the code, put the unit together, and test it. Okay, so here we go. Electronics are here, power adapter's here, buzzer's here, and the phone goes here. Now what you'd really wanna do for your kids is to put the power adapter behind the radio so they can't unhook it. But for our example, I'm just gonna use a cigarette lighter adapter and stick this to the dash. Parents, are you tired of your kids texting while driving? Well, with the new Teen Text Preventer 5000, you can put a stop to that. OMG, I'm going to be late meeting my BFF for the Twilight Marathon! Upon entering the car, your teen will be gently reminded to insert the phone. <laughs> Should your teen try to remove the phone while driving, they'll be gently reminded again. I have to tell Tiffany that Justin Bieber's new song is on the radio! Oh. <sighs> I hate my parents. Their bad behavior will be logged to this SD card, so you'll know if they remove their phone. Their good behavior will also be logged, should there be any. At Heck Industries, we make it hard to be bad. What's the deal with all these movie reboots? Well, the deal is Hollywood considers them low-risk investments. Movies with a known brand should be easier to sell, right? Just ask Battleship. Oh wait, reboots can be successful if they come from huge franchises like Batman, James Bond, or Star Trek, but the other 90% of reboots underperform, like Total Recall, Dread, and Red Dawn, usually making far less than the originals did 20 years ago, not counting inflation. Time and time again, we see new or original adapted properties doing huge business like Hunger Games or Ted. Just look at the iPhone or the Wii. Customers love something new and they'll buy it, but you have to make it for them first. 
Today's question comes from YouTube user Synchron, who wants to know if it would be possible to create a 3D printer control with a Raspberry Pi on a small touchscreen. The best usage would probably be to use the Raspberry Pi as a front end, like an embedded Replicator G or Pronterface. This would give you much better controls and replace the LCD character displays and knobs that most printers use right now. You'd still want to keep the usual printer driver board like Ramps, Rambo, Megaboard, or Printer Board. These boards already exist and they work, plus they have a lot more I.O. than the Raspberry Pi does itself for the actual printer controlling. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be doing a surface mount soldering tutorial. Yes, that's right, a tutorial, just like you've all been asking for. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.